Hey everyone in the Caribbean area, how are you doing? I'm here to talk to you about the food insecurity going on in the area that you are living in. Latin America and the Caribbean island is the world's first region to reach both the international hope goals. Food issues and food systems approach for the Caribbean are the food insecurity in this is in a state of being without reliable access to a sufficient quantity of food insecurity. The, global, the globe lacks diversity because the diets in each country are becoming more similar. For example, sushi come into the United States, McDonald's becoming more popular in varieties of countries. Produce grown also can be vulnerable to disease, such as the bananas, bananas talked about in, in, some, in some articles I've read, like, talked about. Something that happens often is years with low harvest yields, which results in higher prices. For the food systems in the Caribbean, you need to understand a system is a set of elements that are connected and work towards the same goal and together is more than the sum of its individual parts. Systems are preserving, are self-preserving and have mechanisms to help it flourish or fail. To truly understand a system, one should look at its own actions and behaviors. The overall goal of the food system is to have adequate amounts of food and nutrition food for the whole population. The food system starts with the production of crops and livestock, moves through harvest and processing of foods, transportation, marketing, uh, and includes less visible aspects like policies and global markets. Our food system often performs poorly because the subparts don't work towards the same common goal and there are discounts between the parts. While this description may seem simple, there are lots of complex moving parts around us. So in this picture, as you can see, right here, uh, the whole globe is having a crisis with food insecure people. Over the like the years, it's going high and down low, and then now it's increasing to all time high in the like hundred millions of people. So right now, it's not really looking good for the whole globe in general, let alone the Caribbean region, like the Caribbean region. And so when we move on to the role of the land grant universities that challenge the future, I think they need to continue to educate the generation for everyone around us. The economy runs so well here in the U.S. or so well in the U.S. that the amount of people invest in the right areas. So I've, I've read about articles that say that 1.5% of the population is in agriculture, which is very low. This helps in many ways because we are able to have people working in all the areas like of the economy. If the people in the Caribbean do the, the same thing, it could help them with the food insecurity. The Caribbean has about 45% of the country working in agriculture. I think the face the challenges of the future, land grants need to continue to keep the education high and the amount of workers low so they can like continue to thrive on and as the number of the economy in the whole world. Agriculture, the agriculture in the Caribbean says that 45% of the country had jobs in the field I think that having an LGU would fit great in the country. I think the LGU would be like be great because it would have like could educate some of the higher level people, freeing up some other agricultural workers to have work in different fields of study. This would help ad advance knowledge in other areas that just involve agriculture. Uh, food security, safety, and distribution in the Caribbean consists of a place that combat food safety issues. Local health departments are the first place that people might go to if they have symptoms of a foodborne illness and how they respond could impact how restaurants and business react to these issues. It is estimated that about 48 million cases of foodborne illnesses every year, which lead to 3,000 deaths, according to the USDA. This is way too many deaths to do to like preventable illnesses. The government should be extra strict regarding preventing these dis diseases because it is pre it is preventable with proper pr precautions. There should just be not just a slap on the wrist for businesses or restaurants that serve unhealthy foods, but they should receive proper punishment. Individuals should take all these precautions with preparing their own food to make sure they are are not consuming unhealthy foods and should make sure they are buying their own food from reputable businesses that are taking the necessary precautions. When I think of the barriers, culture, trade, political and economic problems that are going on in the Caribbean, I think of the My Plate uh, thing that I've learned about in ALEC 108. 
many people in the Caribbean are not educated on nutritional issues. I think the government in the Caribbean needs to make an attempt to like make these places healthier. I think the government also wants to be healthier because it's not doesn't make our like doesn't make our country around us a whole better or stronger, but it makes the population healthier. Less people would take Medicare and Social Security dollars, which is way better for the government. Guidelines need to be made when it comes to the cultural, trade, political, and economic problems could all be solved. Many people in the Caribbean do not prioritize climate change because only about 11% of the population is worried. Many think that is a distant problem because they have limited resources. Distant meaning that is it, it will disappear over time or it is a problem in other parts of the world that other people should deal with. Many also think that generations to come will be the ones to deal with it, that climate change is happening only to the colder climates or higher altitudes. Climate change is not a priority because other issues such as economy, jobs, health care, costs, and terrorism take high priority. When the topic of global warming comes up, like melting ice caps, polar bears, ozone layer, those should be the most important. However, these are not associated with higher sea levels or increased number of waterborne illnesses. So as you can see in this next picture, the percentage of like undernourished people dropped from seven per, like dropped seven percent in the Caribbean, but are still the second highest among all these d different regions behind the Sub-Saharan Africa region. So right now, even though like the undernourished people is dropping, it's still really high, and it's something that the Caribbean really needs to work on as a whole. And so many base the global warming on like their last experience of weather. I just think that many of us need to listen to what the radio say and just hopefully not disagree with different people around us. Um, the sustainability and organic agriculture in the Caribbean is not up to par. Like we've seen through other sources in the class, uh, organic does not seem to be sustainable on a large scale. The amount of manure and land is not possible to feed our own population. It is great to have foods available without pesticides, but sadly we cannot enjoy the luxury. In several of my other classes I've taken, there are many studies that have tested pesticides and organic foods to see if runoff adjacent farms was transferring pesticides to organic fields, and most of the crops tested positive. This speaks that pesticides have a bigger impact on the environment than we think and could affect more than just crops. Um, the role of the MGOs... Uh, can play a huge part in feeding the world and that that can be sustainable because it can help increase crops and yield reduce and reduce prices some gm gmos uh, highlight enriching vitamins and food that benefit 25 percent of rice grown complete submergent water and gmos are already used in the caribbean but they still are feared uh, there's still people in the caribbean still fear it in the Caribbean, utilizing GMOs such as gen genetically modified fish in such regions is a driven by pro like products of the sea can be a risk of those fish and that end up could have like diseases and ultimately that be terrible for the economy. I think that there are many benefits to GMOs and however we just need to be careful about the potential hazard in the production process that GMOs have. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video for all of you in the Caribbean. I hope you have a good day. See you later.